Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.4.1 has been out for a few weeks along with the revised version and iOS 17.5 beta one has been out for over a week at this point, but there's even more new features to talk about since the iOS 17.5 beta one is out. What's new video. We'll also talk about the overall experience of both 17.4.1 and 17.5 beta one, and not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's over 15,000 votes and 190. 99 comments. I've read every single comment to see what the overall experience is like with battery life performance and more. So we'll take a look at some of your comments later in the video and the experience as well. But first let's talk about a little bit of Apple news. Apple published a new support document yesterday about threat notification. If you actually saw this, this is a new post about it where it says about Apple threat notification and protecting against mercenary spyware. So we can scroll down here and they'll actually have a new notification at the top that says threat notification. It says it's designed to inform and assist users who may have been individually targeted by mercenary spyware attacks, likely because of who they are or what they do. So some people saw this all over the world and Apple offers this lockdown mode. And it says these notifications provide additional steps that notified users that can help them protect their device, including enabling lockdown mode. So now they're just letting you know, which is great. If you're being targeted, it will let you know individually. Apple continues to move iPhone assembly to different parts of the world to help diversify the supply chain. Now 14% of all iPhones are now assembled in India, according to Bloomberg, about one in seven iPhones. So that's great to see them sort of manufactured all over the world. Now we'll probably see this more diversified as time goes on. Apple also introduced a lot of changes in the EU with iOS 17.4 with side loading. And one thing it does for those in the EU is actually prompt users to choose a web browser when you're actually setting it up. And by doing that, it isn't allowing you to use Safari by default, but giving you the choice first. The browsers have to be presented in a random order as not to highlight Safari. And since this change, many browsers have seen a significant increase in users on iOS. This is according to six different browser companies that were approached by Reuters. So this is something that we're seeing more and more. However, most browsers right now are just a skinned version of Safari, but that will change over time. So we're going to see more and more of that. Also, Apple will now allow repairs to use genuine parts with certain iPhones. Apple actually announced this on their website where it says Apple to expand repair options with, with support for used genuine parts. It says new parts calibration process will begin this fall, probably with iOS 18 or something along those lines. So they go ahead and explain this where service centers and others can actually use used parts and not have it not work for you. That's been one of the big pain points. You swap displays, they don't work. So instead of locking them to the, the device, there'll be ways to sort of pair them as well. Now, as far as new features this week, well, something that everyone is benefiting from all the way up to iOS 17.4.1 and 17.5 betas is Safari is finally snappier. That's been an ongoing joke throughout the Apple or Mac or iOS community for years. And this time around, it seems to actually be the case. Apple's actually been working secretly on Safari, making it up to 60% faster. You'll see they publish this where it says optimizing WebKit and Safari for speedometer 3.0. That's actually an application that tests browser speed between Google, Apple, and Microsoft. They sort of worked on that together. And it actually shows that between iOS 17 to iOS 17.4, they've actually made it up to 60% faster based on this test. So that's a huge increase. And maybe we'll go back and check that out with older versions, but it seems between 17 and 17.4, it's much, much faster. Faster. Now that doesn't mean there's not still issues in general, but it's great that they're actually working on that. And maybe if we go to Apple, you'll see things just seem to load pretty quickly these days. So that's a great sign. Of course, I'm curious to see what it's like compared to maybe Chrome or Firefox or others. Let me know what browser you use in the comments below. If you have a subscription to iCloud plus or news plus Apple news actually added the option for a new puzzle. So if you go to following, go to puzzles, and then we go down. You'll see here under quartiles, this is the new one that they've added. So there's new options here for Friday going back well, about a week or so at this point. So if you go into it, you can actually play this game if you want to, and it teaches you the basics as you go through it. So let me know if you've tried this out as well. Within Spotlight Search, if we just pull down and we start to type the word podcast, you'll see here that it not only shows the app now, but it also shows related podcasts that are in our library. So it's starting to show recent ones that have new podcasts, and then you of course can go right into those. Unfortunately, it's not showing all the artwork, but if we go into it, 
it actually sees it as a shortcut that doesn't run for some reason. And this one played, the other one didn't. So there's definitely some odd issues here, but it at least shows the most recent. It doesn't show on 17.4.1 for me. So if you type pod or podcast, it just shows the app. So it looks like they've been working on this. Also something else that's been updated, and this actually has to do with iPads and within the code, it's related to the new iPads we haven't seen yet. So specifically within the code, there's mention of new iPads we've been waiting for. That makes a lot of sense based on when we think this will release. We'll talk about in a moment, but it seems like this references some of those new iPads that we could be seeing in a few weeks or so. Now, iOS 17.5 has a few features we're still waiting for that were in iOS 17.4 betas. I've mentioned these before, but one in particular I'd like to see more of is just live activities. In the clock app, if you go to stopwatch in iOS 17.4 betas, that would go up as a live activity. It works with alarms and timers, but it doesn't work with the stopwatch. So that's something they need to fix, and I would love to see them add that back to stopwatch. Also, Apple had a feature before where you could use SharePlay on a HomePod or Apple TV. They've since removed that, and I would love to see that brought back. We could see that very soon. iOS 18 is probably the most anticipated version in years, as many people expect a major update finally with some refreshed home screen layouts and maybe just a visual overhaul getting rid of the flat design. And according to Nicholas Alvarez this week on Twitter or X, a new Safari browsing assistant will be coming along with iOS 18, as well as an encrypted visual search. He posted this on X or Twitter, and you'll see here, Safari browsing assistant, encrypted visual search, and originally it was thought maybe it would be part of private relay infrastructure. However, later research revealed that it just seemed to be oblivious HTTP gateway. So it doesn't seem to be related, but seems like it should be coming with iOS 18. Many people are expecting a huge overhaul. People that did not say it was going to have an overhaul in the past are now saying that it is. So hopefully that turns out to be true. We get a full visual redesign or at least some major updates with Control Center and more. Now, one issue I wanted to make you aware of has to do with Apple Watch, where Apple confirmed an issue this week. Originally, there was a touch bug on watchOS 10.4 that Apple fixed with that version with Series 9 and Apple Watch Ultra 2. But now they've confirmed that it's affecting Watch Series 7, 8, and Ultra 1. This was according to a memo passed to the Apple authorized service providers. Apple actually told them do not replace the display, but rather just do a force restart and it will fix the issue. However, it may need a further update to solve it completely. So we could be seeing this fairly soon with a watchOS 10.4.1 to fix it permanently before we get watchOS 10.5. Also, as far as releases this past week, we actually had quite a few releases, but not anything we were waiting for. Vision OS 1.1.2 released, Vision OS 1.2 Beta 2 released, and we had another Safari technology preview. A new Safari technology preview releases every couple of weeks, and now we're on version 192. So if you're testing this out, you can use it on macOS Sonoma or Ventura as well. Now, as far as release dates, let's talk about that for a moment as we're expecting some future updates fairly soon. We could get iOS 17.4.2 to address some ongoing issues with iOS 17.4.1. However, we don't have any confirmation of that yet. However, we could have it within a week or two at this point. And Apple actually stopped signing older versions again with iOS 17.4 and 17.3.1. So we're waiting for that sort of update within a week or two, but then also iOS 17. 17.5 beta 2 is expected to release on Tuesday or Wednesday, most likely. That's usually what happens. The first one, two, or three betas are bi-weekly releases, so we could see that on Tuesday or Wednesday with some new features, hopefully, and maybe some changes. But all of the major changes are expected with iOS 18 at WWDC in June on June 10th. That's when we can see all of the major changes, and it's not too far away at this point, about two and a half or two months or so. Now, as far as bug fixes this week, well, there aren't any new ones since I've already mentioned the one about the watch. It's not really a fix, but as far as things that have been fixed, well, it seems to be running pretty good with 17.5 beta one, but 17.4.1 still has some issues. All of the issues I've mentioned before, micro stuttering, battery issues for some, keyboard lag, AirPods connectivity, some still actually have the volume bug. So all of those things are still there, but they don't seem to be getting any worse than that. They seem to be fairly minor bugs but there's still things that are getting in the way. So notifications not showing on time for some people. That's probably what I see, but that could be related to other apps. Squared notifications are back, the wallpaper dimming bug, and others. 
as far as iOS 17.5 beta one. Well, I've been using it on multiple devices this week, the iPhone 15 plus and the 15 pro max. So I've been using it on both and some people have reported a touchscreen bug where a restart would fix it. I haven't experienced this myself and some people say it's related to a screen protector. Now that could be depending on the screen protector, but on this one with 17.4.1, I do have a screen protector on the natural titanium 15 pro max and haven't had an issue with it. And I didn't on the 15 plus either, which also had a screen protector. So I haven't seen that myself, but let me know if you're seeing that. Now there's also an issue that's affecting CarPlay. It seems for some people, I experienced this myself where I had the sound just drop out, even on a downloaded song, it just dropped out and went away. A reboot seemed to fix it for some mine just worked after I tapped play again, but for whatever reason it stopped working properly. Also, sometimes people are having issues with the dynamic Island with different apps, such as Waze or Google maps, and also deleting timers sometimes causes stutter issues. And I think still I've met, I've been having this issue where my wake up alarms don't always go off. They may or may not. I'll have to test it over the next few days, but it seems like it's an issue from time to time. Of course there's freezing or stuttering depending on the device. I noticed it on the 15 plus, but not on the 15 pro max where sometimes you just open an app and it would be really slow for a moment. Then you'd go into something else and the keyboard would be slow. We're seeing this throughout the OS over and over. So there's definitely some bugs they need to work out when it comes to overall connectivity. I actually haven't noticed any problems whatsoever on 15 beta one. So it seems to be good for me. 17.4.1 still may have some issues here or there, but that can be carrier dependent and also the Wi-Fi issues. I haven't had any of those, but again, that can be dependent on your router. My router is an Eero router and they had a major update to fix specific issues with Apple. So be sure to check your firmware on your router as well. If you're having issues, as far as the camera goes, well, there is a bug that some people were experiencing when you switch modes. So if you go into the camera, for example, and then maybe go to a video mode or sometimes go back to a portrait mode, it will change the zoom levels to a level that wouldn't normally be there. So some people are having this issue. Some aren't, it just seems to come and go, but to use portrait, sometimes you have to turn the app off, close it and reopen it. And then it works again properly. So let me know if you're experiencing that. As far as the actual camera and improvements, well, it seems to be pretty good. Here's a few different photos. I haven't noticed any differences really seems to be pretty good. It's not over brightening HDR or anything like that for me and video is good as well. So I've been pretty happy with it in general. When it comes to performance, I've talked about that a little bit already with iOS 17.5 beta one. It was pretty good on the 15 plus it would stutter from time to time. So that didn't have pro motion, but this one does, and it's nice and smooth. I haven't noticed any stuttering or slowdowns on the 15 pro max, but the 15 plus I definitely did. I haven't used the iPhone 11 enough to actually notice anything, but if we go into the weather app, you'll see things load generally pretty quickly, but sometimes there's some delays or bugs throughout, but I haven't seen too many issues other than occasional stuttering, which can be fixed with a reboot. As far as the overall heat, well, depending on what version you're on and what phone you're using, it really depends what people are saying. In my experience with the 15 pro max, it's actually stayed nice and cool on the latest beta. However, some people are saying that it gets overly warm in 17.4.1. Now both are running on both devices. Of course, I've been holding the one on the right here and let's take a look with the thermal camera, but both are fairly cool to the touch right now. And you'll see we're at about 32 degrees Celsius and on 17.4.1, we're at about 29.5 degrees Celsius, but I didn't hold that one in my hand that long. And in Fahrenheit on 17.5 beta one, we're at about 92 degrees Fahrenheit and on 17.4.1, we're at about 87 degrees Fahrenheit. So overall nice and cool compared to what I've seen before, it seems to be much better just doing regular tasks, but I know that's not the case for everyone, but for the most part, it's been pretty good for me, especially on the most recent beta. As far as the overall benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look at that. I ran those before the video and we have an updated Geekbench, which opens a little bit quicker this time around. So we'll go to the CPU history and you'll see, I had 2,899 for single core, 7,150 for multi-core. If we go back and take a look, it's a little bit higher than it was last time I ran it. So that's a good sign as far as multi-core, but we're so close here that I really don't expect a difference. And iOS 17.5 beta one will probably be improved upon with the next couple updates. As far as battery life, well, let's take a look at this device. Now I did use a different device. Like I said, the 15 plus, which was getting me pretty good battery life. 
but under battery health, we're at 99% with 156 cycles. And my battery life today, which is the first full day, you'll see I took a little break there using a different phone. I've had two hours and 57 minutes of screen active time and used, well, I did have it plugged in for CarPlay, but the screen was off, so I've used about 30% of my battery. It's getting me through the day, and with the 15 Plus, I was getting to the end of the day with about 50% left. So it's doing pretty well overall. 17.4.1 varies greatly depending on who you ask. Some people say they have to charge it all the time. Some people actually have pretty good battery. Now Cameron sent in his battery life and this is on a 15 Pro Max with 98% battery health. And we're at about 50 to 60% battery usage and we have five hours and 31 minutes of screen active time. So depending on who you ask, they have very different experiences. And we'll take a look at that in the comments in a moment. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.5 beta one, if you haven't at this point, I'd probably just wait until next week when we expect beta two based off of what we've seen in the past. That seems to be when we'll get it. So wait at least until that version or the public beta version and see what it's like. Otherwise you can try it out, but I wouldn't install it if you were trying to fix anything or trying to get better battery life or just have it be less buggy. As far as the overall comments, let's take a look at what you had to say. Rob Walker said 17.4.1, 15 Pro Max, screen freezing and unresponsive buttons in Safari is something I've noticed quite a bit, which is a little ironic since Apple really sped up Safari in general. IgorS92 said iOS 17.4.1 on an iPhone 14 Plus. Battery wise, I have to say this is not the same phone I bought. Battery is half of what I used to get. Now, I haven't heard the reports of that from my daughter who has the same phone. She hasn't complained at all. So again, it's a very different experience depending on who you ask. Magnificent Production said, I'm on iOS 17.5 beta one. My 14 Pro Max is working exceptionally with absolutely no bugs and a very decent battery life as well. My thoughts are this can only get better. Janix7945 said 17.5 beta one is way better than 17.4.1. No lag at all. Have Hope 52422 said, I'm using Using iOS 17.5 public beta one on an iPhone 12 mini. I'm loving this update. The only thing is when I charge it, it gets hot, but not just hot, hot. I have to take off the case at night. Other than that, no bugs at all. And by the way, love your videos and thank you. Tom Schroeder 784 said iOS 17.5 beta one on an iPhone 13 pro max has been reliably working with my watch, which is often not the case with a first beta Apple CarPlay with my 2020 Subaru accent will often drop out the sound and a reboot of the phone fixes the problem. Lokman Syed said iOS 17.5 beta one on my iPhone 15 pro max has been really amazing. I can finally get through the day with only 20% of my battery left, no bugs and everything feels really smooth. So that's everything with iOS 17. 17.4.1 and iOS 17.5 beta one. Hopefully we get a new beta soon and an iOS 17.4.2 update very soon as well. Hopefully we'll see that within a week or so. Let me know if you've found any other new features or any bugs that I haven't mentioned in the comments below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.